Come you by the salmon fish and come you by the ropery. Saw you my dear sailor laddie sailing on the raging sea. I come by the salmon fish and I come by the ropery. I saw your dear sailor laddie sailing on the deep blue sea. Come you by the salmon fish and come you by the ropery. Jingles up the salmon bothy every Friday virtually. Hello everyone. Welcome to Folk at the Salmon Bothy. I'm Maggie Spears and with my husband Tom we're hosts for this evening. The first song I'm going to sing is from Peter Hall's Source Recordings and it's a lady named Lottie Buchan of Peterhead and the song is called A Freena Mine and it's what people would want to be doing at this time in life, um, meeting up with a friend and going out and having a drink. A freen o' mine, come here yestreen, and said that we'd gang doon, and drink a pint o' ale we hem, and then explore the tune. But o' oh, the ale it was so strong, and say the worst for me, for lang or ever I've come hem. My wife, she's teen the gee, oh, the, the gee, gee, oh, the gee. For long or ever I've come here, my wife she's teen the gee. And in the morn fin I come doon, and ne'er a word she spak. But money's a sad and sorry look, and I er he did shark. Says I, my dear, what aileth he? You look, say sair at me. I'll never do the like again if you never tack the gee, oh the gee, oh the gee. I'll never do the like again if you never tack the gee. With a she ran, she ran and flung her arms about my neck. And twenty kisses and a clap, and I peer thing she grat. If you'll never do the like again, but bide at him with me, I'll live my life, I'll be the wife that never tax the gee, oh the gee, oh the gee. I'll live my life, I'll be the wife. That never talks to the gee. And when we say the gee, it means she's um, taking umbrage at him, she's sulky. She's gone in the huff. <laughs> Thanks, Maggie. Thank goodness you never talk the gee. The next singer is a very well known children's entertainer. But back in the 70s and 80s, he and his wife Scylla were an internationally famous duo with a wonderful repertoire of folk songs old and new. So here's Artie Tresize, without his funny hat, singing about the dreadful but legal method of recruitment for the Royal Navy's sailing ships. Hi all you chills from the virtual salmon bothy, uh, I've just popped in to do a wee song for you. Again I'm going to apologise for the backdrop here, uh, it took me ages to put up so I'm not going to take it down for one song. I've put loads of songs for kids up on YouTube, about 25 I think now, and uh, they're getting a lot of views. So I'm going to keep doing it right through the lockdown. Uh, it's Artie's Singing Kettle on YouTube. But now, the song tonight is Bobby Tullock's Hunted on the Hillside. Bobby Tullock was the RSPB representative on the islands, uh, but he was interested in all, all, everything Shetland, should I say. And this is part of their history where 
At one point, they were invaded by people from the Navy who press ganged men uh, uh, in the middle of the night. They were just taken for their families and they were enlisted, whether they liked it or not. Um, it's a powerful song and it has something to say for today, I think. Uh, we're somewhat invaded ourselves and uh, by a force that we don't know very much about, but we've got to fight it anyway. So here we go with Hunted on the Hillside. They were hunted on the hillside They were taken from the croft Forced to feed the cannon They were made to climb aloft Wives and mothers left to weep what can their future bring? Their men are pressed and forced into the navy of the king. Their men are pressed and forced into the navy of oh, the king. The harvest moon was shining on the toon ship down below. Her golden face reflected in the waters of the Vaux And the suns all Shetland rested for their labours of the day When silently a man of war came sailing in the bay Silently her anchor slid and silently Why, why can't they let our islands be? Our men fight hard enough to get their living through the sea. Will the day never dawn when the freedom is secure? It's one law for the rich and another for the Whispered order given in their boats with muffled oars. Five and twenty blue coats pulled silently ashore along the banks in single file and through this took corn. Another five will join the ranks before the day is born. Yes, another five will join the ranks before the day is born. Why, why can't they let our islands be? Our folks fight hard enough to make their living fair the sea. Will the day never dawn when their freedom? Secure it's one law for the rich and another for the poor. The crashing of a musket butt upon the crofter's door. A green wife and a feather beaten to the earthen floor. A sullen sun in manacles is hustled to the shore. Five men less in Kirkatoon to work another board. Yes, five men less upon the half to haul upon an oar. It's why, why must the poor man always pay? Why must he fight the battle when he has so little say He doesn't hate the Spaniard And he kens na was right Let them that mark the quarrels Be the ones to stand and fight Let them that mark the quarrels Be the ones to 
stand and fight A powerful song, I'm sure you'll agree. Bobby Tullock's Hunted on the Hillside. Stay safe everybody at Port Sawyer. I'll see you again maybe. Bye. Wasn't that lovely to hear Artie Tresize singing a traditional song? Now we have a club regular, Debbie Moody, and until this lockdown, I was not aware that Debbie played a musical instrument. And tonight she's playing the tune, Sally Gardens. Debbie here. Um, I'm going to do you a piece of music from the book that I came in the post this week, which I'm delighted to receive because it has some beautiful tunes in. And a, a backing CD so I don't have to um, pester Paul to try and do something for me. Um, and you'll notice that I'm wearing compulsory headgear. Uh, it would appear that as performers we are expected to have some sort of hat. Um, so uh, here I am as a unicorn, hopefully a, a magical mythical beast. However, I did realise that the word unicorn has another meaning. You may want to look it up, which perhaps I wouldn't be so keen to be associated with. Anyway, big smile there. Um, so I'll come to you at the end to see whether you recognise the tune. Uh, and uh, enjoy. Hopefully you recognise that as Down by the Sally Gardens, um, which I think is a, a really lovely little tune. So that was that was me for this week. Stay safe, everybody. Take care. Bye now. Thanks, Debbie. That was lovely. And now for what I think is a self-penned song from the man who had the idea and the know-how and the enthusiasm to get the Sam and Bothy's Friday Night Virtual Folk Club up and running. I, of course, refer to the very talented Mike Blackburn. Uh, this is my shot at a salty old sea dog song. Oh, I might take a notion to go back to the ocean. I might take a notion to go back to the sea. For the life it is hard and you're always in motion. But this living on dry land is murdering me. I was tied to a ship in the port of Great Yarmouth. My father took guineas and gave me five years. So I started a cabin boy, worked up to galley man, paid off the bond before. I was 18 and I might take the notion to go back to the ocean I might take a notion to go back to the sea For the life it is hard and you're always in motion But living on dry land is murdering me On the next ship I cooked and I 
cooked and I cooked. Ah, the smell of old cabbage and salt beef is fine. But we stayed out too long and we lost men to scurvy. And I got the blame though the fault wasn't mine. So I might take a notion to go back to the ocean. I might take a notion to go back to the sea. For the life it is hard and you're always in motion. But this living on dry land is murdering me. Then the Frenchies they sank us and three of us rescued by Nelson and Hood when we thought we were dead. And the next twelve years passed as the life of a jack tar and I lost my left eye but I wanted no bread. So I might take a notion to go back to the ocean. I might take a notion to go back to the sea for the life it is hard and you're always in motion but this living on dry land is murdering me. But now in the harbour there's nobody wants me A one-eyed old cook with tall tales of the sea The world is forgetting we sailed and we battled And now it seems even my wife forgets me So I might take a notion to go back to the ocean I might take a notion to go back to the sea For the life it is hard and you're always in motion, but this living on dry land is murdering me. So throw me a line and I'll board for adventure. I need the deck moving and salt on the breeze. I am old, but I'm willing to serve as a sailor. I cannot get used to this living at ease. So I might take a notion to go back to the ocean. I might take a notion to go back to the sea. For the life it is hard and you're always in motion. But this living on dry land is murdering me. Yes, I might take a notion to go back to the ocean. I might take a notion to go back to the sea. For the life it is hard and you're always in motion. But living on dry land is murdering me. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Mike. That was really good. Now we're going to hear from a chap called Alan Taylor. He's a friend of ours from Afford and he's well known for singing Bothy Ballads. Now the song he's singing tonight I don't think is and it's called By the Light of the Silvery Moon but not the version I know. Hi, I hope everybody's well. We'll sing a song. It's a wee comic song about the perils of uh, not trying before you buy and when you get to uh, find a partner so in the body to nowhere i was holiday in there when the roses and the thistles were in bloom when a lassie passed me by with a twinkle in her eye by the bright shining light of the moon it was true love at first sight, and well a mind the night, when we began to cuddle and to spoon. We were married then and there, in a week or do not dare, by the bright shining light of the moon. Well, I'd squandered a meadow, to her home we had to go. Oh, what a way to spend a honeymoon. There was no fire in the grate. You looked up through the slates at the bright shining light of the moon. Now when she went up to bed, ach, I just sat there and read. But what a shock when I got to her room. I for hanging on a peg was a great big wooden leg by the bright shining light of the moon. Now mere trouble lay in store, for when she began to snore, the blankets they get fleeing round and round. I am there upon the chair with her teeth and golden hair by the bright shining light of the moon. Then she turned out with a sigh. Ah, 
She took a tad blue glass eye. The other was a funny shade of green. And I near jumped out of my wits when she took off her rubber lips by the bright shining light of the moon. She said, come out of bed, afore I lose my head. She grabbed my run about my dressing goon, but I slept upon the chair. I will, Mr. Hare was there by the bright shining light of the moon. So young man, take my advice, look your sweethearts over twice. For there I would to catch a fine young groom, pull her teeth, her legs and hair, to make sure that she's all there by the bright shining light of the moon. The bright shining light of the moon. Thanks, Alan. Uh, it's certainly a wee bit different. We've dug into the club's archives for this next one. It's from last year's 10th Hall and features Arthur Watson with a lovely interpretation of Jeannie Robertson's song, A Bit Son. He's accompanied on this by Norman Chalmers and concertina and me on fiddle. <laughs>
I really loved to hear Arthur singing. That was really good. Now we're having Paul Moody and it's a continuation of the story of Albert. Hello again to another week. We're in the grand ass again today, back in the office. But I have made some progress. We've got floorboards down. I don't have to be careful where I tread and I won't fall through to garage, so not so bad. So what's Albert been up to this week? It's a tale about a jubilee sovereign. On Jubilee Day, Ramsbottoms invited relatives to tea, including young Albert's grandmother. An awkward old <coughs> party was she. She'd seen Queen Victoria's ascension and a wedding to Albert, the good. But she got quite upset when young Albert asked her how she got on in flood. She cast quite a damper on to party. But she warmed up a bit after tea and gave Albert a real golden sovereign. She'd been saving it since Jubilee. It had a picture of Queen on one side and Dragonfight on reverse. And it smelled of camphor and cobwebs through being so long in a purse. Albert handled the coin and he kissed it and he felt the rough edge with his tongue for he knew that look on his father that it wouldn't be his for very long. Shall I get you your money box, Albert? said mother so coaxing and sweet and Albert let drop an expression he must have picked up in the street. I'll show you a trick with that sovereign, said Pa, who were hovering near. And he took it and pretended to eat it, and then brought it back out of his ear. Well, this magic filled Albert with wonder. And before you could say Uncle Dick, he got, up, got the coin back from his father and performed the first part of the trick. When they all saw where money had gone, with excitement the relatives burned, and each one suggested some process for getting the sovereign returned. Some were for fishing with tweezers, while some were for shaking it out. And we only got a few bob back that would be better than nout. They tried holding head, but head down and giving his shoulders a clump, till his uncle, who worked at chemist, said, there's nout for it but a stomach pump. Well, they hadn't a stomach pump handy, but Pa did his best as he could with a bicycle pump that he borrowed, but it weren't nearly half as good. So off they went to doctor, who looked down his throat with a glass, he said, e, this will mean an operation. I fear he'll have to have gas. I, 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 how much is this here going to cost me? Said father, beginning to squirm. I'm afraid that it comes out expensive. The best gas is eight pence a therm. This my time, six shillings an hour. And you can't do these things in two ticks. By rights, I should charge you a guinea. But they'll do it for 18 and 6. What? 18 and 6 to get sovereign? Said father. That doesn't sound sense. I tell you what, you best keep young Albert and give me the odd 18 pence. The doctor concurred with this arrangement. But to this day he stands in some doubt as to whether he's in 18 shillings or whether he's 18 pence art. Well, keep safe and we'll see you again. Thanks, Paul. He's a NASA lad, that Albert. We're going to finish off the first half with Moonshine Madness singing an Alan Taylor classic, but neither Alan Taylor theatre. 
the line, it's good to see you, to be in your home, is a perfect thought to, to take us into the break.
dark as evening and guarded the town. But where there's a will, oh, there's always a way, and the young man has gone with the young Hi everybody, welcome back. And a great pity I missed the start of Dougie singing Ned of the Hill there. He's got a great voice and it's a lovely song. We're going to carry on now though with somebody that you are keen and doesn't need an introduction, but I'll give you know anyway. It's Lorna Summers. She's a lot to tell you one of her stories. And the only point I would make is that we can assure you that no animals were harmed in the making of this video. Aye aye, it's a wild and stormy afternoon here in Macduff. We haven't had wind and rain like this for a long time. Anyway, I'm here to tell you a story and it's a bit of an experiment. I've never done this to camera before. So I hope it's all going to work out. First of all, make yourselves comfortable because I'm going to tell you the story of the three grumpies. Now, maybe you came this story already, in fact I'm pretty sure you do, because it's otherwise known as the three little pigs. But because we're here in the northeast of Scotland, we're here in grumpies, because I think it's a lovely word for piggies. A long time ago, up behind the Durn Hill at Pertsoy, there lived an all mother Sue and her three little grumpies. But the little grumpies grew and grew and they weren't as a little on a mare, but they were taking up, up and off a lot of space in her little hoosie. And at last, the all mother Sue said, No loans, it's about time you up and left him and found a place for yourself. I suggest you head down the road towards Pertsoy. I'm sure that you'll find something fine there. Well, the, two, the three little grumpies thought that this was a, was a good idea, a good adventure. So, off the set, down the road for, the, for behind the Durn Hill, head into Pertsoy. Well, they have not gone very far when they met a farmer with a big load of stray. And the first little grumpy says, Hey, farmer, can I get, a, get some of your stray? I'll pay you for it. Aye, fairly, says the farmer. It's no bother. It'll save me taking it out of the way down because I was going to do was to bed beast sweet. But you can fairly hear it. So the first little grumpy got a big load of stray just beside the side of the road and he set to to big himself a hussy. And the other two headed on down the road. Well, it didn't take him very long. His biggin was straw. It's not that hard. And he was seen fin finished and sitting outside his hussy he had a quick cup of a tea. The other two headed on down the road and very soon they met a man with a big load of sticks. Now the man was going to sell it to folk for, for firewood. But the second little grumpy says, Hey, Manny, can I get some of your sticks? I'll pay you for them. I fear like that, said the stick man. I'll just put them down here. And he offloaded a great rumble of sticks at the side of the road. And the second little grumpy set to and started to build himself a house. 
and some it left the sad little grumpy heading off all by himself down the road to Perch Soy. Well, it didn't take the second little grumpy hour long to build this house for himself. It was ready in no time and there he was sitting outside of his little housey in a cup of tea. Meantime, the third little piggy headed off down the road and he was very nearly at Pertsoy when he spies a manny with a big load of bricks and he says, Hey, manny, can I get some of your bricks? I'll pay you for them. Aye, fairly, says the manny with the bricks. I was wondering what I was going to do with them. Far aboots if you want them. Well, the little grumpy says, Oh, just here at the side of the road, I'll do fine. So the man with the, the bricks unloaded them to the side of the road. And the third little grumpy set to to Biggie's hoosie. Now, if you've ever tried building with bricks, you'll care that it's not easy. It takes quite a lot of doing. You've got to get mortar and cement and you've got to get all this, the bricks laid out straight and they've got to be at right angles and all kinds of things. And it took the third little grumpy a long time before he was satisfied with his hoose. And then, of course, he had to even go and get sticks and wood and slates and stuff for the roof. And it that indeed took him a long time. It didn't, he wasn't ready the next day or even the day after. It was just a chaff. But at last, his fine, snug little hoosie was added and he had a fine door on it and a fireplace set up inside and he was quite chuffed with himself. Well, in the meantime, up on the top of the Durn Hill, Fa was watching if it was going on down below, but an all scranny all wolf. Now, once he had been fine and supple, but no, he was all and stiff, and he couldn't chase after rabbits or after deer or anything of the sort. He had just had to scran if he could get his teeth empty. And he was looking at the three little grumpies and thinking, that looks awful fine to me. I'll seen he pork chops for my tea and roast uh, joints of pork for my dinner. Oh, that'll be really fine. And if I get going, I might even he bacon for my breakfast. And I'll be able to hear it three times. <laughs> and he rubbed his paws together. And he set off, off the top of the Durn Hill, doing towards the first little hoosie, which, if you remember, was made of stray. Hello, says the wolf. Hello, I'm a friend of your mother's. Let me in. But the first little grumpy took one look at him and thought, Oh, oh, oh no, he's never been a friend of ours. Oh, let me in, little grumpy, let me in, said the wolf. No, nah, no, nah, said the grumpy. And before the wolf could do anything, the little, little grumpy was boring his way out through the back wall and the big wolf was starting to say, well, if you winna let me in, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll Blah, your who's doing? And just as the little piggy was escaping out through the back wall, the hail of the rest of the hoose collapsed because the wolf had blown it down. And the little piggy skedaddled away down the road to see his brother, the end that had the hoose that was made with sticks. Well then. He, he scooted down the road and he knocked on his brother's door and said, Help, help, there's a wolf coming down the road after us. Let me in. And so his brother did. His brother let him come in. And they shut the door and they 
Cooley doon in a corner and hoped that the wolf would pass him by. But nah! Very soon there was a knocking on the door. Aye, aye, we grumpies, said the wolf. Aye, aye, I'm a friend of your mother's. Let me in. No, no, said the two little grumpies. We'll never let you come in. Ah, well, said the wolf. I'll do what I did before. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your hoose down. <coughs> and he started to huff and puff. And the two little grumpies broke down the back wall of the wooden hoose and they scooted a while down the road as quick as they could to see their brother down the road at the brick hoose. Well, when the wolf blew down the hoose that was made of sticks and found that there was no piggies inside, he wasn't a happy man. And he decided he wasn't going to hear just one he was going to hear them. Ah! So off he went down the road, following in the dust of the two little piggies who were quickly heading to their brother and chopping on the door and saying, Let us in! Let us in! And the, the third little grumpy opened the door and said, What's a day? Oh no, there's a wolf coming after us. Let's in! So they came in and they slammed the door and bolted it tight shut. And very soon, here was the wolf prowling round the brick hoose saying, Little pigs, I'm a free of your mother's. Let me come in. And the third little grumpy says, Oh, no, no, nay, by the hair on my chinny chin chin, I'll nay let you come in. Ah, said the wolf, well, I'll do what I did afore. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your hoose down. <coughs> you just try, said the third little grumpy. So the wolf huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed and he huffed and he puffed. But he couldn't have blow down the hoose that was made of bricks. Ha ha, thought the three little grumpies, knew we are safe. But ah, uh, that wasn't the end, because the big bad wolf went round and scrambled up onto the roof of the house, and he climbed up on the chimney pot, and he was starting to slide down the chimney, when the three little piggies, very quick, lit a fire, put on a great big pot, that was getting ready for soup. And just in time, when the wolf slid down the chimney, he landed, splosh, into the water that was in the big pot. And he got such a scare that he shot right back up the chimney with his burnt bum. And he ran and ran, a wa far awa, a wa for the Dunhill, right far, far awa up into the country. And he never bothered the three little grumpies ever again. And the three little grumpies danced and sang and clapped their hands and decided they would go down to Pertsoy and buy, buy themselves an ice cream. And that's the end of this story. Thanks, Lorna, but I did feel a wee bit sorry for the wolf. This next singer, Paul Kersley, lovely chap, and I really like his singing, and each time I hear him, he's getting better and better, and he's singing a Bob Dylan song. Bob Dylan songs have been with me since I was about uh, 15 or 16. He was the one that, uh, when I heard the times they are changing, I went out and bought a guitar for three quid. I'm still trying to work out how to put the strings on it and how to, to play it. Um, this one's called Ring Them Bells. I normally uh, play it around Christmas because it's the nearest I can get to a Christmas song. Uh, but I'd like to devote it to Thursday evening at 8pm. That uh, wonderful thing that goes on now. OK, thank you. Thank you. 
Thursday evening at eight, I light a candle now. Bring them bells, ye heathen, from the city that dreams. Bring them bells from the sanctuaries of the valleys of kings. Over deep and they're wide, and the world's on its side. And time is running backwards, so is the time. Ring them bells, St. Peter, where the four winds blow. Ring them bells with an iron hand, so the people will know that it's rush hour now on the wheel and the plow. And the sun is going down on the sacred cow. Ring them bells so the world will know God is one Oh, the shepherd is asleep And the lions they weep Cause the mountains are filled With lost sheep Ring them bells For the blind and the deaf Ring them bells so I left Ring them bells For the time that flies For the child that cries When the innocent dies Ring them bells, St. Catherine From the top of the moon Ring them from the fortress from the lilies that bloom Oh, the line it is long And the fighting is strong And they're breaking down the distance Between right and wrong Ring them bells For the blind and the deaf Ring them bells For all of us who are left Ring them bells For the time that flies For the child that cries When the innocent dies Well done, Paul, that was great. Well, it's time to get back down to earth now. Be something for me. But don't worry, it's nice and short. Hello again. I've got the Sig Aside we song now. This one's called The Knock in the Bin, which I found in the Greg Duncan collection. There's a surprise for you. It uh, d- didn't have a tune, uh, so I wrote a wee tune for it. And uh, Maggie will join me in repeating the first verse. It only has two verses. And it's uh, the story of the Highland Clearances, a, a couple being driven off their croft to make uh, room for the, the sheep and the deer. Uh, it was collected by Gavin Gregg, as I said, and uh, it, he collected it from a man called Jonathan Gold, who was born in Glen Bucket in 1868. So there's a wee bit of history for you. Craft we had 
shivered sea long. Now her soul is at rest in the hay-good nest, and her body is lain far in the richest mungan. But it's cold as the wind, or the knock and the bend. My earth is asleep in its blanket. Thanks, Tom. That was great. I take it that's from the Greg Duncan collection. Now we're going to have Moonshine Madness, Ronan and Neil, and they're singing one of my favourite songs from Johnny Cash. <laughs> I don't know where I stopped it for some prison. Time to drag it on. And that train keeps going. Where the sand's on. Well, when I was a young boy, my father told me, son, I'd always be that good boy to stay with my guns. But I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. I hear that noise of whistle. I hit my head with pride. It's a fancy dining car. They fly me drinking coffee. It's full of fancy bars. I know I had it coming. I know I can't be free. But them people keep on moving. That's what tortures me. If they bring me from this prison, if they swear the train is fine, I better be well on the little crew down the line. But for the pulls of prison, that's where the party was sick. And I have to take that noisy whistle, where my blues are with it. seeing some moonshine madness on the Friday nights. Time now for one of the club favourites, Alison McConaughey. She has a beautiful voice and an ever-expanding repertoire of old, new and self-penned songs. She also has an excellent accompanist in the form of Neil, who it is rumoured has been known to smile. Here she is with a fine Irish song. <laughs> Make 
Thanks, Alison and Neil. That was super. Now, this next singer, I'm biased because I'm her mother and it's Emma Spears. And this is from last year's um, 10th Hall up at Port Soy. And it's Emma, where? Dad. <laughs> Get up, get up, my lazy limbs. Get up and wire them on man. For the breeze of brew our realty blue. Their rock and race keep on man. But the blue man laddies my delight. And the blue man laddies lose me. But the rest can take the blue man comes to see me Well, he's taken up his house and bow And it's, it's a real take man He's laid it o'er the house and bow Says, Scotty, come a warm man But the blue man lad is my delight And the blue man
Imagine if you could get a singer like Mike Blackburn teaming up with a duo like Alison and Neil McConaughey. Well, you can. They're called Northern Shore and they're about to sing Both Sides the Tweed. The tune was written by Dick Gochen, but the words are attributed to James Hogg and were first published back in 1819, just before Mike moved to Port Soy. It's a song of friendship which is a great way to finish tonight's programme. Well, it's goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from him. Keep safe. Okay, both sides of the tweet. One, Let friendship and honor 